Welcome to the All-State Game of the Week on ESPNU. BYU and Florida State's 2010 football seasons took losing turns last week. This week, quarterback Christian Ponder and his fellow Seminoles returned to Tallahassee, hoping to get their season back on a winning track as they host Riley Nelson's BYU Cougars. Both teams are in need of a season-defining victory to catapult them back into the top 25. It's next on The U. Welcome to Tallahassee, where Chief Osceola and Renegade make their traditional entrance to the delight of the Florida State faithful. We are in Tallahassee on the campus of Florida State University, welcoming you to the All-State Game of the Week on ESPNU. We come to you live from Doak Campbell Stadium as today BYU takes on Florida State. And we welcome you inside, Pam Ward along with former Florida State and NFL quarterback Danny Cannell. And boy, both of these teams, Danny, are looking for bounce back victories today because it wasn't pretty last week. We'll start with BYU. They look pretty good beating Washington in week one, but then came crashing back down to earth last week against Air Force. That's right, Pam. They started off strong in week one, but it's been a little bit of a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde type situation. You don't know which team's going to show up. In week one, J.J. DeLuigi was had a great week. They were able to defeat the Washington Huskies with the highly touted Jake Locker at quarterback, but the following week at the Air Force Academy struggled all day long. They got up to a 14-7 uh, start, but ended up going 28 unanswered points for a tough loss on the road. And a similar situation for their opponent today in Florida State. They had an easy win against Samford in week one. Very different story when they went to Norman and lost to Oklahoma 47-17. Christian Ponder's numbers sort of... Uh, showed that as well. Yeah, it was a humbling loss for this Florida State team that was riding a confidence high uh, uh, coming off a week one win. But Christian Ponder struggled, probably one of his worst performances as a Seminole. But I think he's the least of their worries for this Florida State coaching staff. I think they'll feel like he'll bounce back pretty strong. But I think a lot of the question marks are the guys around Christian Ponder. Very young and inexperienced receiving core. Ponder has been touted as a possible Heisman Trophy candidate but needs to put up better numbers than he had last week. And Danny mentioned it. The coaching staff at Florida State really felt it was the guys around him who brought those numbers down. Exactly. And I think the biggest shock was the two interceptions because Christian Ponder is typically very careful with the football, makes good decisions. And they're going to have another issue to deal with today. Left tackle Andrew Datko will not be playing. So they're going to have to figure out the left tackle position and how to protect Christian's blind side. And that was an offensive line that gave up four sacks last week against Oklahoma. Here comes Florida State onto the field, getting ready to take on BYU. Kickoff coming up. You got those windy spicy chicken nuggets. Or are they too spicy for you? Well, what is it? They're only 99 cents. Try Wendy's 99 cent spicy chicken nuggets. All white meat seasoned with peppers and savory spices. Yeah, but the real kick, you get five pieces for only 99 cents. Only at Wendy's. You know when it's real. Treat yourself to a cool, creamy frosty today. Also just 99 cents. Yep. Welcome back to Florida State, just moments away from kickoff as BYU comes into Tallahassee for the very first time. These two teams met a year ago in Utah. BYU was number seven in the nation. Florida State coming in as decided underdogs, but Christian Ponder and company came out slinging it. Ponder 21 of 25 for 195 yards. He threw for two touchdowns and ran for one more. There you see it. Florida State's Ty Jones and Lonnie Pryor helped keep the ball on the ground, and then Greg Reed did his part on defense, picking off Matt Hall, going 63 yards with a score. 
And the Seminoles won it convincingly, 54-28, ending BYU's 18-game home win streak. And this is a Florida State tradition, what they call the Sod Cemetery. Danny's very familiar with that. They take a piece of sod and then bring it home. That's some Coach Bowden brought in here to Tallahassee when he started here as coach, and it's a pretty unique uh, deal that they have going for the players. Gives them a little bit of extra motivation when they play on the road. This is the fourth time that these teams have played. First time they played here in Tallahassee. Max Hall had two touchdowns and three interceptions last year in that game. You see the first couple of games were played on a neutral field. Florida State gets the football first. Greg Reed, very dangerous, number five in Garnet in gold. One of the best returners in the ACC, if not the nation, and Marcus Joyner also is back there with him. There's a couple of guys back there that you better be careful. Anytime either one of them touch the ball, it's got potential to go the distance. BYU number one in the nation, however, in kick return defense, so strength against strength. As Riley Stevenson kicks off, and we are underway in Tallahassee. Boy, that's a long kickoff. Reed gets it nine yards deep in the end zone. That's one way to contain a strong kick return game. Don't give him a chance to take it out. Boy, Stevenson just boomed that kick. And now, here comes Christian Ponder and the Florida State offense. The numbers on Ponder, not so bad, but he did have a big struggling week last week on the road against Oklahoma. And Danny mentioned in the open that Andrew Datko is not playing. The left tackle hurt his shoulder that's been bothering him throughout the fall camp. Could not go today. So Henry Orlees, a redshirt freshman from Belle Glade, Florida, number 59, is a starting left tackle. And a starting run for Jermaine Thomas, who has emerged as the number one tailback, picks up five yards. Andrew Rich made the stop for BYU. Here are today's impact players brought to you by Russell Athletics, and we already got a glimpse of Greg Reed on the kickoff. Yeah, Greg Reed is the type of guy that can change the game with one play, but I'd be surprised if they give him any opportunities today. Taiwan Easterling also on the baseball team here at Florida State. They need their receivers to get going, and Jermaine Thomas knocking on the door of 1,500 career rushing yards. Ponder's first pass is completed to Rodney Smith, who had a terrific spring here at Florida State. Picks up four, so they'll be looking at a third and one. And Rodney Smith's a the guy they want to get involved early in this football game. He hasn't had uh, too much success so far this season. It's been pretty much a two-man show at the wide receiver position. The depth has been an issue. They're going to try to get him involved in the passing game. James Coley, their offensive coordinator, told us yesterday that he wants to get a big game from Rodney Smith. Here's the third and one at the 29. And Thomas... Goes backwards. Great defense. Jordan Pendleton coming up, leading the defensive charge. They only needed one yard, and they lost four. That's a great job at the point of attack by the BYU defense. Their front seven is fairly young, but they come up there, get physical, especially Jordan Pendleton, number one, getting the outside contained, forcing them back inside. But look at that. He does get away with a little face mask penalty there. Sometimes those officials miss those calls. So Florida State could not convert on a third and one. Sean Powell punting. O'Neill Chambers waits back at his 25. Powell a very good punter, and he displays it with that kick. Taken by Chambers around the 22. Flag comes in as Chambers is taken down at the 36-yard line. Fourteen yard return. We'll wait to see the penalty. Dan Romeo is our referee. And Pam, that's something I don't think you'll see too often today as a penalty against this BYU team. They're very well coached, very disciplined in everything they do. It's a little bit of a shock to see them get the early penalty and give them a poor starting position. Will be interesting to see how the quarterbacks are used today. Riley Nelson, the junior from Logan, Utah, with 10 career starts under his belt. They had the terrific Max Hall last year. Nelson has been splitting time with Jake Heaps, a true freshman that everybody is excited about in Cougar country. 
And the lefty slings it out to Cody Hoffman. Hoffman's bottled up as soon as he makes the catch. Greg Reed coming over, talented corner, kept him to a two-yard gain. Today's impact players brought to you by Russell Athletics, J.J. Luigi, the talented running back for BYU coming off a career week. He's a tough back, and if you want to take pressure off some young quarterbacks, get your running game going. Andrew Rich, we've already seen him make a stop on the defensive side of the ball, the former walk-on, who is now a star at BYU. Second and eight, Luigi gets it for the first time this afternoon, and he broke a tackle, stumbled forward to around the 26-yard line. Nigel Bradham made the stop. And finally, our last impact player is Matt Reynolds, talented left tackle who is on a couple of big watch lists. Yeah, it'll be interesting to watch him play to do. He switches from left tackle to right tackle, depending on which quarterback, because you've got a righty and a lefty quarterback. So we'll have to keep an eye on where he's lined up. Not only first team all Mountain West last year, but first team all academic Mountain West. He's a terrific player, just a junior. Third and five for the Cougars. Nelson steps up in the pocket, somehow eluded the first tackler, but not the second. Dropped a couple of yards behind the line of scrimmage by Xavier Rhodes, the redshirt freshman from Miami. Well, that's been something that's been lacking the last few years here at Florida State. They have not been able to get after the quarterback. Riley Nelson looking downfield, nowhere to get with the football. Xavier Rhodes stepping up to make the sack. Riley Nelson looking downfield, nowhere to go with the football. Florida State's defense off to a much better start already than last week. And I don't know, Pam, you saw there, BYU was going with a no-huddle offense, trying to do a little bit of what Oklahoma did last week. That no-huddle really hurt the Seminoles' defense. That, by the way, is the first sack given up by Brigham Young all season. Riley Stevenson in for his second punt. Or his first punt today, excuse me. Reed gets it. Very dangerous return, man. A 54-yard punt, but it's returned nine yards. Shane Hunter with the stop, Florida State with the ball. The turn changes everything. The turn will make you think, make you re-examine your approach, change your line, innovate, and create one of the world's fastest reacting suspensions. Reading the road 1,000 times per second. It's the turn that leads you somewhere new. Introducing the new 2011 CTSV Coupe from Cadillac, the new standard of the world. Style points don't show up in the box score. Talking a good game has never won a championship. And we're sorry to break it to you. It's not the shoes. It's the work, the pride, the blood and the tears. Because Russell's wicking sweat out of the equation. Russell dry power moisture wicking tees and fleece. The next evolution in over 100 years of raw performance. Start your engine. ESPNU is home for the passionate college football fan as our experts break down the top 25 in a weekly three-hour special. Alabama looked fantastic this week. Where are they now and where are they going to be? That's the key. The experts, Tuesday at 1 on ESPNU. This telecast is presented in high definition on ESPNU HD by Comcast. Welcome back to Florida State. BYU and the Seminoles still scoreless here in the first quarter. ESPNU's coverage of college football continues tonight at 7 Eastern as number 15 LSU takes on Mississippi State. And then you can follow that at 10.30 Eastern. UNLV is taking on Idaho. College football primetime presented by 5-Hour Energy on ESPNU and ESPNU HD. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. The Vandals of Idaho on ESPNU later on today. BYU. Had to punt, as did Florida State the first time they had the ball. 
And there's a first down run for Jermaine Thomas. Shane Hunter and Jordan Pendleton make the stop after a four-yard gain. I think it's going to be interesting to watch who gets off to a better start. Both teams coming off poor performances last week. What you want to do is you want to come out and execute well early so you can kind of put that week behind you, get your confidence back. So it'll be interesting to see who gets off on the right foot. Christian Ponder putting a lot of the blame on his shoulders last week, which really is, is sort of what he does. The coaches say it kind of carries the burden. There's a deflected pass off the hands of Burt Reed. Reed, nine catches away from 100 in his career, brings up a third and six. There are 10 returning starters for Florida State, but still, Danny, there's a lot of question marks, particularly in the receiving front. I think depth is something they want to see. Burt Reed, the last uh, reception there that he dropped, that was Christian Ponder's favorite target by far, but they need some other options for him to go with the football. Four receiver set now on third and six. BYU shows blitz. They drop off, only a three-man rush. Ponder, he can run. Runs very nippily for the first down into Brigham Young territory. Picked up 15, and when they played last year, that was one thing Bronco Mendenhall mentioned was that he really was surprised by how athletic Ponder was. He caught him off guard last year, and this year he just flat out made a great individual play. And this is one of the things that Christian Ponder does that makes him special because you've got to respect his ability to throw the football downfield. We've got everybody retreating into zone coverage. It just opens a lot of running lanes for Christian Ponder, and he's able to take advantage of it. Ponder averaging just under four yards per carry now. More importantly for Florida State, they get their first first down of the afternoon. All the time in the world, and he finds his man. Burt Reed beats Brandon Bradley. Bradley, the defender, is from right here in Tallahassee. as a lot of folks watching him, and that time he gave up the play. And this is just simply a case where as a defender, you really have no chance when the ball is thrown that well. There truly is no defense for a perfectly thrown football. And right there, you see Christian Ponder putting it right on the money. Bradley was in perfect position. You saw number five, but that's just a perfectly thrown ball. 22-yard gain, and you're right, boy, Bradley was blanketing him. But Ponder put it right where it needed to be. So it's first down now from the 25 for the Knowles. Ponder decided to keep it instead of pitching it. And Pendleton came up to make his third stop of the game. Only picked up about one yard. The offensive line, and Henry Orlis is starting for Andrew Datko. But they're, they're big guys up there, and with the exception of Orlis, a lot of experience. The thing that sticks out to me, look at the starts across the board, 37, 42, 24. That is a lot of experience up front. That's a real luxury to have uh, as an offense, as a whole. Orly starting for Andrew, Andrew Datko, the left tackle out with a shoulder issue today. A couple of tight ends in now for Florida State on second and nine. A little play action, Ponder gets it out. Nice one-handed grab by Reed. Stuck his hand up there and brought it in, but he lost the football. BYU comes up with it. And a turnover early stops the Seminoles' drive. Burt Reed coming across on a slide route. Gets lost a little bit by the defense. He's got a big guy out in front. You've got to secure the football towards the end of that run. This BYU defense very opportunistic trying to strip the football. Shane Hunter, senior from Idaho Falls. Idaho came up with the fumble recovery, but boy, he made a one-handed catch, but the problem was he kept it in that one hand. Spectacular grab, and I really think the officials want to look and see if his left foot hit the out-of-bounds line, and I don't think it did. You saw the circus catch there, which coaches don't have a problem with if you hang on to it, but when you fumble at the end of the run, he'll get his share in the, in the, in the film room. <laughs> That's right the there, I think, is the, where they want to look at, and I don't think he was out-of-bounds. I think this is going to be a turnover. And remember, you need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field, which was a fumble and a BYU recovery. The ball hit the helmet of Rodney Hudson, the very talented left guard who's been touted for the NFL. But the play is under review upstairs. And a big call early for both teams. Florida State on a nice drive. And here's what they're going to look at. Burt Reed coming over towards the sideline. They'll freeze it right there. That's what they'll be watching to see if his foot 
hit the out of bounds mark, and I do not think it did. I think there is space. And the ruling on the field has been confirmed, and, and there you see the way the on that replay, it was Hudson's helmet that kind of came in and jarred the ball loose, and Reed did stay in bounds. So that's a big turnover. BYU gets it on the 12th. Riley Nelson continues to be the quarterback for BYU. Check that, it's Heaps. Jake Heaps has now come in for the first time. Throws it on his first play to Cody Hoffman, threw it low, but it was caught. And Heaps is a guy from Issaquah, Washington, and he really, I mean, a lot of fans are, are really, can't wait for him to start. Flag is down. DeLuigi is corralled. And that was a case there where you saw BYU running the no huddle. And once again, Florida State's defense caught a little bit off guard. I believe they were lined up in the neutral zone or jumped there early. They were not ready for that quick snaps when Jay Keeps came up to the line of scrimmage. Oklahoma used that no huddle to great effect last week in the 47-17 pacing of Florida State in Norman. Second and one. Keeps hands it off. And the first down is gained by J.G. DeLuigi, who leads the Mountain West Conference in all-purpose yards so far in this young season. He picked up four. So here's a two-quarterback system. You've already seen both of them, Heaps and Nelson, for the first game and a half, alternating series. And I thought it was interesting that head coach Bronco Mendenhall said he doesn't like to do that. He would rather just have one guy. He's not a fan of it. I don't think anybody's a fan of it. I wasn't as a former player. It's just tough to find a groove. Heaps throws it low. Xavier Rhodes on the coverage. Mendenhall letting his offensive coordinator, Robert Anai, and also Brandon Doman, the former BYU quarterback who is now the quarterback's coach, and he has deferred to them. And what they are looking for is a clear-cut number one guy, and they haven't found him yet. But I love how Bronco said he was quietly forming an opinion. He hasn't <laughs> yet come up with that final decision, but he will. That pass. Will, come, will result in a one-yard loss. Luke Ashworth, the wide receiver, taken down by Mr. Alexander, first name M-I-S-T-E-R. Mr. Mr. Alexander did a good job. And it's really interesting to watch this BYU offense early. It's almost like they took Oklahoma's game plan and just installed it in their offense. A lot of quick passing game. They're running the no huddle, trying to do the same things that Oklahoma exposed against Florida State last week. Oklahoma threw 19 screens in that game. Here's a third and 11 for BYU. Heaps goes down and loses the football. BYU hangs onto it. Marcus White put the big hit on the quarterback, but Braden Brown recovered it for BYU. And a great job by Florida State's defense getting after the quarterback. You see the struggles at the right tackle. Braden Brown had cover in the corner. At least he did get on the football. Jay keeps looking down the field, trying to find a receiver, and that's the second sack we've seen with a BYU quarterback looking downfield but having nobody to throw to. Two sacks in two series given up by BYU after giving up zero sacks in two games against Washington and Air Force. Greg Reed back to get the punt of Riley Stevenson. And Reed down at the 30. A 51-yard punt, so Stevenson has kicked both of them over 50 yards. The fans don't think that Reed was down. Or they say he called the fair catch. FSU has the ball at the 30 when we come back. If you're looking at a home security system, or even if you already have one, ADT can give you so much more. Like our new keychain remote, 
Now you can easily arm and disarm your system with the touch of a button, even turn on your lights. You can also count on fast alarm response from our advanced network of monitoring centers, plus great local service, ADT's exclusive theft protection guarantee, and a money-back guarantee if you're not completely satisfied. And you can get all this and more for as little as a dollar a day. A single ADT system can help protect your home from burglary, fire, and carbon monoxide. When an alarm is received, ADT can respond quickly, calling local authorities for help. You can even add new technology like Safe Watch Video View. Now you can know what's happening in your home by actually seeing it on your cell phone, computer, or TV. Even if you already have a security system, it's easy to add ADT monitoring. Call now and save over $250 when you buy ADT's family package. It's peace of mind that can also save your life. ADT, always there. My name is Jennifer. I joined Match three months ago. I thought, why not? You never know. You, you may meet that one great person. Nice to meet you. The world has changed. One in five relationships now begin on an online dating site. Do you like 80s high school movies? Yeah, it's like my favorite. And when it comes to meeting someone great online, there's only one place to go, Match.com. We've led to more dates, more relationships, and more marriages than any other site. Begin something new today. I'm hoping I can see him again, maybe um, tomorrow. <laughs> ESPNU College Football All-State Game of the Week. Brought to you by All-State. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you like All-State. Are you in good hands? Well, welcome back to Florida State, where we are still scoreless between the Seminoles and the Cougars. And Greg Reed was called for making a fair catch signal. It's pretty weak. Yeah, this was a poor call by the officials. He was just doing his job. He's up there. It's a poor punt. He's informing his blockers in front of him, stay away from the football. It was a poor punt. They do not want to get hit with a football because you could have a turnover. Instead, he goes back and fields the punt. The official was fooled by that, but Greg Reed just did a great job of communicating with his teammates. And especially when they want that fair catch signal to be very uh, yeah, clear, and yeah, clear, expressive, conspicuous. Christian Ponder, three for four, make it four for five, right at midfield. He's four for five on the game. Bert Reed making the catch and holding on even after he got smacked by Stephen Thomas. An outstanding throw and catch by Christian Ponder and Bert Reed. The little play action sucks up the linebackers just enough where you find that window down the middle of the field. And Bert Reed does an outstanding job of hanging on to the football. 20-yard gain. Look at Reed. He pops right back up. He has three catches for 54 yards now in the game. Right at midfield, first down. And that carry by Thomas picks up about four yards. Andrew Rich made the stop. Rich, a terrific player for BYU, originally walked on, had been given some scholarship offers. Boise stayed among those who wanted him, but here's a, a kid from Ogden, Utah, who wanted to be a Cougar. He's a pretty interesting story. Came in as a walk-on, went to Snow College, played a year there, and came in with a three-piece suit on to Bronco Mendenhall and pleaded his case. And sure enough, Bronco was really impressed with this young man. He's been just as impressive on the football field. Career-high 14 tackles last week. Right now tied for 14th in the nation, 11 and a half tackles per game. Ty Jones now the running back. Ponder doesn't need a running back. He's his own running back. Picks up the first down inside the 40. Gordon Pendleton's been busy. He has four stops already. This is something so unique to Florida State's offense because a lot of teams are running a wildcat offense, but they can really do it with their quarterback, Christian Ponder. That was just a called run. You know, play to the left, and then he has the running back as his lead blo blocker. So it's just an outstanding tool to have in your backfield at the quarterback position, a weapon like that that can run. 25 yards rushing already for Ponder, leading his team in that category. Picked up nine on that last one. So yeah, it's first down from the 37. He had a big running day last year against this BYU team. Ty Jones is the third tailback that Florida State has used today. He has a hole and spurts right through it, right up to middle for another Florida State first down. Jones ran for over 100 yards last year against BYU and gets 13 on this run. And Ty Jones just finding a, a little spot off guard and tackle right there. The lane opens up, and he finds it. He's going to find that hole and take the most of it. You get him on the second level face-to-face -face with a safety. One of these days, it could break for a touchdown. 
There's an injured Cougar on the field. It's free safe, safety Stephen Thomas who lost his helmet as Jones went by him. We'll take a break and come back to Tallahassee. Your source for the best gridiron coverage is College Football Live. Our team is on the pulse of the game, bringing you analysis. If they lose this game, they're definitely out of the national championship talk. Breaking news, highlights, and big game predictions. I'm going big red, baby. Plus, we go deep for exclusive interviews. The secret is out, my friend. <laughs> and unique features that will keep you wanting more. Let's go, guys. Come on. College Football Live, weekdays at 4 on ESPNU. It military personnel can now drive away in a brand new Thomasville Toyota with an extra $1,000 in your pocket. Call now for instant approval. Air Force, Navy, Marines, Army, National Guard, and Coast Guard. Active or inactive reserve status gets you qualified. Get an extra $1,000 in your pocket on top of 0% and rebates up to $4,000 at Thomasville Toyota. Call now for instant approval appointment. Thomasville Toyota, where you drive home happy. Keeping you comfortable is what we do best at Barino Heating and Air Conditioning. Turn to the experts of Barino Heating and Air, your local Carrier President's Award winner. Right now, you can receive up to a $1,325 instant rebate on select Carrier systems. Add to that their 100% satisfaction guarantee and 10-year warranty on parts and labor, and there has never been a better time to call Barino Heating and Air. Barino, keeping you comfortable is what we do best. Welcome back, Stephen Thomas. Terrific sign, the junior from California able to get up and walk off the field. Let's take a look at what happened to him before the break. That's a good sign. We talked about him being open field tackle. You see his helmet go down straight to the quad of Ty Jones, and that can be such a dangerous hit when you hit a player's leg with your helmet. You see him unconscious almost immediately, but it's a good thing to see him up and moving around, taking off the football field. Ty Jones, he packs some power, 5'10", 211 pounds, and as you saw in that replay, he hit Thomas square on with, with his thigh. Still scoreless here. Florida State had a good drive the last time down the field, but lost a fumble that BYU picked up at the 12, and now here's another nice drive underway. They've already gone 46 yards. They went 54 yards in their last drive before the fumble. Another carry right up the middle. This time it's Lonnie Pryor, the fullback. Picks up five. And Florida State has really been able to move the ball fairly effortlessly so far to this point. They just have not been able to push it in. Look at the total yards by a little bit one-sided, 110 to five, but still 0-0 on the scoreboard. You know, it's very similar to last year's game out in Provo when Florida State had so much success. This is the only thing last year they were able to punch it in. Jimbo Fisher, who was the offensive coordinator under Bobby Bowden for the last three years before he took over. This is his first season in charge, the ninth head coach in the history of this program. And Bowden, last time he wasn't the head coach was 1975. First down run for Ty Jones. Let's check in with Dari Noka in the studio for SportsCenter U in-game update. All right, Pam, Danny, Virginia Tech trying to avoid an 0-3 start. Boise State would love them to avoid that as well. They're up 28-27. Handoff to David Wilson, eight yards, touchdown. They're early in the fourth. Hokies lead ECU by eight. We'll keep you posted. Thank you, Dari. It was 10-0 East Carolina at one point in that game. Playing in Blacksburg. Florida State with six first downs. BYU just the one, but we are still scoreless. Jones again. And this time he doesn't get much over the left side. Picks up a yard or two. We talked to Jimbo Fisher about the running back situation, said Jermaine Thomas is the clear-cut number one, but it's really a running back by committee situation where he likes to give the guy who has the hot hand you feed him the rock late in the football game. So I'm, he's in the process right now of figuring out which guy is the hot one. Also likes to rotate the backs because he said in this day and age, these guys just get beaten up. Take a lot of hits, so it's hard to have just one running back. Second and eight, Ponder gets into trouble, gets out of it, and goes down short of the first down. Taken down around the eight by Austin Jorgensen, who is a linebacker. 
And BYU now doing a great job of getting after the quarterback. We've seen Florida State have some success. Christian Ponder might have been able to look down the field a little bit longer, but he's such a weapon running the football, he's able to get back for some positive yardage and keep them in a manageable third down situation. Yep, in fact, he picked up three yards, so it's third and five as we are inside one minute to go in the first quarter. They have to get down to the three to keep this drive alive. Jones in the backfield with Ponder. Jones goes out into a pass pattern. Ponder into the back of the end zone, but it's too tall for his intended receiver, Rodney Smith, and that's got to be pretty tall because Rodney's 6'6". That's what I was thinking, but this is what you tell your quarterback to do no matter what level you play. If you're going to take a shot at the end zone, miss high because it's just going to go out the back of the end zone. And Christian Ponder really surveying the field and pretty much just making his mind up to put it out of the back of the end zone and take the field goal. Good coverage. Ethan Mano Maleuna with good pressure on the quarterback that induced him to throw it away. Here's a 26-yard field goal attempt by Dustin Hopkins. Florida State on the board. Sophomore from Houston with the field goal. Florida State finally breaks through. They've held on to the football for a long time in this game and have a 3-0 lead to show for it as we head back to Darinoka. Well, guys, Chris Doring in studio with me. Mark Ingram's back, I would say. 48 yards on his first carry of the season, Chris. I didn't expect him to use him that much today, but uh, clearly that was a little different plan. He's already over 100 yards, and we're not even barely through halfway in the first quarter. Four carries, 102, and a touchdown. Heisman Trophy winner. Okay. Four carries for 102 <laughs> yards, Danny Cannell. That's that's a good average, right, buddy? I'd, I'd say he's back to full speed. I think he's healthy. I think that's a safe safe thing to say right at this point. It's at about a 25 and a half yard per carry average. Long on to Facebook.com slash ESPNU today. Become a fan and let us know your opinions. Oh, we have a question. Mm. It's a big weekend in college football for the ACC and Big East. We want to know which conference will win more games this weekend, the ACC or the Big East. Not a good weekend for the ACC last week, my friend. No, it was a disaster, but it got off to a better start this weekend, Thursday night. NC State had the big win versus Cincinnati, but you look at teams like Virginia Tech, who's trying to dodge a huge bullet and disastrous start. Uh, <laughs> they're struggling all day long. East Carolina giving Virginia Tech all they can handle. NC State with that win against Cincinnati the first time this year. An ACC team has beaten a team from another BCS conference. Hopkins kicks it five yards deep. O'Neill Chambers up the right side and stumbles to the 24-yard line on the return. And we await to see which quarterback will come out for BYU. And they're going back to Riley Nelson. Now, the two-quarterback system, I would think, would be untenable anyway, but alternating every series? Yeah, it would just seem to me like it would be very hard to get into a groove, into some type of feel of the football game. I mean, when I was coming out of college, that was one of the reasons I did not go to University of Florida because Steve Spurrier was not afraid to do it. I wanted to go somewhere where I was going to be entrenched on the field. And Spurrier has a habit of doing that. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and for reasons sometimes that only he knows, that pass is thrown and completed. Now they're saying an interception. McKay Jacobson, the intended receiver, and yet Florida State came up with the football. Well, McKay Jacobson was struggling with the football. And we'll get a look at it. A low thrown ball. He's trying to, kicks off his foot. And Kendall Smith looks like he's the guy that, coming over to make the tackle, just rolled on top of the football. McKay Jacobson actually kicked it with his foot up to Kendall Smith for the gift. That, that's going to be reversed. There's the football right on the ground. Kendall Smith does his best Jarek Jeter, though, trying to... Yeah, how about that? <laughs> Pulling off the acting job, acting like he did have the interception. But unlike Major League Baseball, we have instant replay <laughs> That's review. right. We will get it right. So that, that, will be, that will be overturned. The ball going off the foot of Jacobson. And then Smith, who's a terrific athlete, the senior out of Bushnell, Florida, has the ball bounce underneath him. 
pretty clear cut right there for the officials to get this call right. I mean, that's the thing. You saw the throw there was a little bit poorly thrown. And you've got Riley Nelson, who has been sitting on the sideline for the past series. It's, it's got to be tough. I mean, I always wanted a situation where I could get a couple throws, get a couple completions under my belt. It's just got to be such a challenge to have to leave the field and come back on and try to get into the game. According to Robert and I, he, the offensive coordinator, he said they have two starters, and they will play it by ear. The ebb and flow of the game is what they say. But still a very difficult situation. And, and remember, the other guy, Jake Heaps, is a true freshman. It's almost to the point where if I was a coach, I'd want to let the guy go for a quarter maybe. Let him play the first quarter, see how he's doing. If he's not generating anything, then give it to your 1B guy and let him go in the second quarter and then make a decision at halftime. See whatever guy did better, let him play the second half. For further review, the ruling is that the ball hit the ground incomplete. The second down and 10 at the 24-yard line, BYU's ball. Paul was absolutely correct. The fans not happy about it, but when they go home and watch it themselves, they have to agree. BYQ to backs today, three of six for four yards with the two quarterbacks. That's not exactly lighting it up. No, and they really have not tried to move the football down the field at all. Almost every throw has been within five yards. Second and 10 with 25 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Luigi in the backfield with Nelson, who has four wide receivers. Pitch back to Luigi, trying to get around the corner, but he can't. Florida State's Greg Reed is fast, fast, and he and Terrence Parks got to Luigi after a one-yard game. And Greg Reed taught, caught some heat last week for his tackling skills, but here he must have had a week of practice where they had him on the field working on his form tackling right back there, back to the fundamentals of sound football. That is the end of the first quarter. When we come back, it will be third and nine at the 25 for BYU. Florida State with 121 yards of offense. BYU only has six, but it's only three nothing, Florida State. Break down college football's top 25 with the experts. Tuesday at one on ESPNU. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Texas, Texas Tech at Notre Dame, Michigan State. Tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC or ESPN2. College football lives here. Get the best gridiron coverage on College Football Live. Our team is on the pulse of the game, bringing you analysis, highlights, big game predictions. I'm going big red. And unique features that will keep you wanting more. Let's go, guys. College Football Live, weekdays at 4 on ESPNU. Are things different now that I'm not crushing quarterbacks every Sunday? Yeah, a little bit, but I still have a taste for greatness. So I love Dr. Pepper. The taste of these 23 flavors can never be equal, like me. Pizza for McNabb. I got it. Donovan. Mike? What, man? Oh. Oh. Woo! Come on, Mike, man. Still got it. There's nothing like a pepper. Trust me, I've sent people to the doctor. Oh. It's another perfect day out here today. Can I get you anything else? We gotta get back to work. Well, I spoke too soon. This just in. A freak storm is blowing into the area. We're going to be experiencing hurricane force winds and dense fog, followed by sheets of driving gray. Stay inside, hunker down, grab a beer, this is gonna be a long one. Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. We're receiving reports of hail the size of... Oh boy. 
time to take matters into your own hands. AutoZone's got the advice and expertise you need to take on any job. Because do-it-yourself doesn't mean you have to do it alone. Get in the zone. AutoZone. Florida State leading BYU. Pam Ward along with Danny Cannell. Here's our first play of the second quarter. BYU has it third and nine at the 25, and their offense has gotten absolutely nothing going today. Just six total yards. And now they have to hear it from the crowd. Florida State's offsides, and they blow it dead. Brandon Jenkins jumps way early. Dead ball, offside, defense, number 49, unabated good quarterback. Five-yard penalty, still third down. This is one of those things where defensive coordinator Mark Stoops talked about his team being very immature on the defensive side of the ball. Brandon Jenkins, Jenkins trying to get to the quarterback, but you just have to hold your water. You cannot jump off sides in a third and nine situation. And I don't agree with that unabated to the quarterback because no, Brayden Brown picked him up right away. I think BYU would have liked a free play. Here's a third and four. And the quarterback puts his head down and gets the first down for BYU. First quarter stats. Boy, Florida State. It's been pretty dominant so far for the Seminoles, but Riley Nelson there able to keep a drive going for BYU, pulling it down and doing it on his own. That is his strength. He's not a pure passer. He's a guy that can run around, do play action, and work the option. Back ran for 95 yards last week. Leading rusher for his team, Brian Correa's turn to carry the ball for BYU. Picked up four. Florida State losing to Oklahoma last week, 47-17. How about Oklahoma with 34 points and 372 yards at the half? And 321 passing yards. It was a pretty ugly performance for this Florida State team. And Jimbo Fisher really in week three is facing one of his biggest te tests of his young coaching career. This BYU offense lost so many weapons from last year. Nelson flings it over the middle, incomplete, good coverage. Xavier Rhodes among them. Let's go back to the studio. Here's Dari Noka. All right, continuing to update Mark Ingram, guys. How about five carries, 119 yards, and two touchdowns? Last season, he had two carries of at least 45 yards on the season. He has two of those in the first quarter today. Uh, yes, Dari, but his average per carry is going down. Of course, he, he scored a touchdown that time. He couldn't go any farther. That's right. Wow, what a terrific ball player. Obviously the Heisman Trophy winner. Third and six, that pass tipped and picked off. Intercepted by Xavier Rhodes after Michael Harris tipped it. And the Seminole defense continues to play hard. And this has been a thing we've seen all day. BYU quarterbacks looking downfield, nowhere to go with the football. And that is a great job breaking on the football by Michael Harris, tipping it up, giving his teammate Xavier Rhodes a chance to come over and get the interception. Outstanding job of just getting to the football. Michael Harris from Miami with the tip. Young man who's had a very emotional couple of weeks. His mom passed away a couple of weeks ago, and they had the funeral just last Tuesday in Miami. But he is the one. Give him credit for forcing that interception. Ponda runs into his own man. Ran right into big old number 77, Zabri Sanders. Well, they teach you as a quarterback to keep your eyes down the field. <laughs> But you better watch out and make sure where your big right tackle is. Christian Ponder moving to his right. He is surveying the field. Zebri Sanders just runs right into him. And Zebri at 6'6", 307, like literally yeah. running into a wall. <laughs> There's the big guy out of Dayton. Again, Andrew Datko not playing today, but the other four starters on this offensive line. Yeah, they've been playing together, starting together for at least three years. Usually when you talk about feeling the pressure, it's the other team, <laughs> yes. not your own team. <laughs> Brings up a second and 14. That one is thrown out into the flat and taken by Burt Reed. On his pass, complete to Burt Reed. Picks up.
picks up a, only a couple of yards. Pendleton credit him with yet another tackle. So Christian Ponder is a guy who before the season, and certainly the folks here at Florida State have, a, have him up on their website as a Heisman hopeful. Mark Ingram had just a, a terrific season last year and is back today after missing the first two games. And what an outstanding start he's off to making his run at a second Heisman Trophy. Never been done before. And imagine if he did it without playing in the first two games. That would be unprecedented. Third and 12 for Ponder. Has time. That was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Vic Sooto, senior from Carlsbad, who was a converted tight end, got his hands on it. Vic Sooto, one of their big guys, down lineman. Doing a great job getting his hands up. That is so frustrating as a quarterback. When you're thinking you have great protection and you try to put the ball down the field and it gets batted down by one of those big mitts. And you mentioned that Vic Sooto has been around the block a little bit. Played both sides of the football, redshirted, played a little linebacker, and now finally at defensive line. As a sixth year senior, showed that athleticism. You could see why he was a tight end, the way he got up. Powell's punt, skips out of bounds. It was Florida State's second three and out. BYU has the ball around the 17 when we come back. Florida State up 3 0. You look like an angel. Walk like an angel. Talk like an angel. But I got one. You're the devil in the sky. We put it through over 5,000 quality tests, so it'll stand up to just about anything. The Nissan Altima. Innovation that lasts. Innovation for all. This is Ben Landis, filling his car with quality Conoco gas for the first time. This will help lower his car's emissions and remind it how much it likes being Ben's car, so it will quit trying to ruin his love life. Good job, Hanson. Help maximize your car's mileage, lower its emissions, and increase its performance with Conoco. Because your car knows. Style points don't show up in the box score. Talking a good game has never won a championship. And we're sorry to break it to you. It's not the shoes. It's the work, the pride, the blood, and the tears. Because Russell's wicking sweat out of the equation. Russell Dry Power Moisture Wicking Tees and Fleece. The next evolution in over 100 years of raw performance. Gear up at Cabela's. Get what's new for the season at tough to beat prices. Shop your way online at cabelas.com, by catalog, or in store. Cabela's, world's foremost outfitter. Welcome back to Florida State. Dustin Hopkins with the field goal gives Florida State the 3-0 lead. ESPNU's Campus Connection brings you campus life through the eyes and voices of the students. Quarterback Christian Ponder is also a serious student. Having already earned a BA and an MBA, Florida State senior Megan Chestnut looks at what he's working on now. Christian Ponder completed his MBA this past spring and now is pursuing a second graduate degree in sports management. I think I've always been disappointed in my studies and and found time for academics. Ponder epitomizes the term student athlete. So when he gets a break from the field, you're likely to spot him here, looking to leave his legacy with the garnet and gold. For ESPNU Campus Connection, I'm Megan Chestnut. Ready to play football, Christian Ponder, a captain, a terrific role model for Florida State, and now it's Jake Heaps. First and 10 from the 17 for BYU. Heaps, the freshman back at quarterback, hands it off to DeLuigi, who picks up eight yards. And BYU continues to alternate quarterbacks on series. And Jake Heaps, a touted, highly touted high school football player. Coming in there, Coach Mendenhall said he saw a throw that he made in the spring and said, whoa, who is this kid? Korea. Gets met right at the line of scrimmage. There are flags down on the play. Korea, a terrific student athlete for BYU, majoring in Chinese. 
So that's that's a heck of a major there. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need it. He's doing really well. That's right. Scholar athlete in the Mountain West Conference. Illegal formation. Offense. Five men in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Replay second down. BYU have 31 players who are married. That is most in the Bulls subdivision. Five of them are fathers on BYU. And about three quarters of them have taken two-year missions. Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the LDS Church at BYU. Second and seven. And a big play by the defense. Marcus White. Comes up with the second turnover of the game from BYU. And this is something the young quarterback's going to have to learn. When you're looking downfield, you have to secure the football. That is something this defensive line of Florida State is going to do every time they're around you is try to strip the ball. Marcus White, very opportunistic, getting back on it. And this is probably one of the most significant pass rushes we've seen out of a Florida State defense in quite some time. Marcus White has a sack and now a fumble recovery on his resume for this game. And Florida State, terrific field position at the 20. Bouncing right up the middle is Ty Jones, junior from Tampa. Uh, known for being inconsistent last year, but the coach has said that he came in with a different attitude this fall. Of course, Jimbo Fisher came in as the head coach, and Jimbo has instituted quite a few changes. And you know Jimbo had his mental list working when he was here the past three years at Florida State under Coach Bowden, and as soon as he was named the head coach, started implementing those changes almost immediately. Second and four now for the Seminoles. Jones still in the backfield. Ponder takes off on the design run. There's a flag down. I get an illegal block. First foul. Chop block. Number 33. High low combination block. 15 yard penalty. Replay second down. They called the chop block here. You can get a look at it. Florida State running their almost wildcat play with Christian Ponder in the backfield. If you freeze it right here, these two linemen right here are locked up high, and you'll see the back go low, and that is against the rules in college football. That is a dangerous way. That's a way to get somebody hurt, and they're just trying to do their best to protect these athletes on the football field. Ty, Ty Jones was the guy who went low, and... It's a tricky situation because a lot of times you're coached to cut guys, but you just have to be aware of where your offensive linemen are, and you cannot do it when they're engaged with a defensive lineman. So the penalty brings it back. Ponder has the ball tipped over the middle, and then the helmet flies off of Burt Reed's head. It was tipped by Shane Hunter, the middle linebacker. Reed complaining about the contact he got up around the helmet. Of course he is. He better be. He's a wide receiver. <laughs> Here's Christian Ponder. Same play they ran earlier in the game. And a great job by Shane Hunter getting his hands up. That's the second or third time we've seen a ball batted down by Florida State. And when the ball is batted in the air, you can make contact. But I don't know if it's okay to rip his helmet off. Travis Uale got a hold of the face mask and... Took the helmet off, but the officials did not see it. Ponder with all the time in the world, but there's good coverage. Throws it late. Caught along the sideline, ruled incomplete. Willie Halstead tried to get a toe down, but the officials say he did not. Well, Brandon Bradley, the Tallahassee native, is having an outstanding day. Earlier, we saw Burt Reed get the best of him on him when he was in blanketed coverage here again. Brandon, uh, Christian Ponder scrambling to his left. Bradley's right there, and Halstead just could not keep his one foot in bounds. So here comes Hopkins. He's already hit from 26. Here's a 47-yard attempt. His career long was a 52-yarder against Miami last year. And that one is good as gold. 
Hopkins connects for his second field goal of the game. Florida State leads it now, six to nothing. BYU getting outgained big time, but still only down by six points. Twelve summers of boat hauling. Six minutes to soccer practice. 63 miles of commuting daily. For any extreme, from the road to the racetrack, step up to Mobile One, the official motor oil of NASCAR and the world's leading synthetic motor oil brand. So put some NASCAR in your car and step up to the one, Mobile One. You got those windy spicy chicken nuggets. Or are they too spicy for you? Well, what is it? They're only 99 cents. Try Wendy's 99 cent spicy chicken nuggets. All white meat seasoned with peppers and savory spices. Yeah, but the real kick, you get five pieces for only 99 cents. Only at Wendy's. You know when it's real. Treat yourself to a cool, creamy, frosty today. Also just 99 cents. Yep. You look like an angel. Walk like an angel, talk like an angel, but I got one. You're the devil in the sky. We put it through over 5,000 quality tests, so it'll stand up to just about anything. The Nissan Altima. Innovation that lasts. Innovation for all. ESPNU College Football All-State Game of the Week. Brought to you by Mobile One Extended Performance Synthetic Motor Oil. It's proven to protect your engine for 15,000 miles between oil changes, guaranteed. Well, welcome back to Florida State. Dustin Hopkins has just kicked a 47-yard field goal. It's 6-0 Florida State. But during the break, Jimbo Fisher was very animated on the sidelines, upset about this non-call as the helmet was ripped off the head of Burt Reed. And this was Jimbo's reaction. Well, he was hot as he should have been. I think the, the official got kind of sidetracked because he saw the tipped ball, so he just kind of shut it off, said, all right, I'm not going to call pass interference. But at the same time, you have to keep an eye on what's going on on the field. And when you see a player's helmet get like that, Jimbo's pleading the case letting him have an earful as he should have. And that got the crowd all excited, made more noise about watching Jimbo than they did when they saw Hopkins hit that 47-yard field goal. Hopkins here to kick it off. Chambers and Hoffman waiting for it. Had three turnovers in this game. Another long kickoff by Hopkins. Florida State leading it six to nothing. And BYU continues juggling quarterbacks. Pam, the thing that's interesting about the way this game has unfolded is Florida State has pretty much dominated this football game, and yet they're only up six to nothing. You're one play away from being down a point. And if BYU springs one here for a touchdown, Florida State will be losing. They've got to figure out how to way to get the ball in the end zone. BYU with 27 yards of offense. Florida State with 125, almost plus 100. BYU sticking with heaps here, giving him a chance to get his feet wet. Two straight series now for heaps after they've been flip-flopping him with Nelson. And that one is thrown over the middle and completed to O'Neal Chambers. Picks up 15 yards. And I really feel like this is a sign that Heaps is comfortable now. He's coming back on the field, although the last series wasn't a huge successful drive. It's just a comfort factor. You're confident. You're taking the field again. You're in the huddle again, making play calls. Heaps, the true freshman, with Luigi as his tailback, Mendenhall the fullback. And Luigi met right at the line of scrimmage and taken down by Nigel Bradham for no game. Let's go back, another update with Darinoka. Well, let's talk about Florida here. Slow start in Knoxville. A couple more bad snaps between Mike Pouncey and John Brantley, but the Gators get on the board. Mike Gillisley with a short touchdown run. Florida up 7-3. About 11 to go in the first half. 
Thank you very much. Chris Doring must be doing the gator chop in the studio. <laughs> All-time leading receiver in SEC history. That pass is thrown a little bit high. Okay, Jacobson nicely covered by Greg Reed, the sophomore from Valdosta, Georgia. He has a ton of confidence. Great return man. And now the starting cornerback. Last time BYU came east, they lost to Boston College in double overtime about four years ago. They play in the mountain time zone out in Utah. Third and 10 at the 35 now for BYU. Four receivers in. Heaps throws it underneath, completes it, but a terrific tackle takes Brian Correa down about five yards short of the first down. Nigel Bradham with a good job of wrapping him up. And Florida State's pass defense has been pretty solid all day. BYU has been looking down the field. Most of their throws have been underneath. And right there, Jay Keeps, nowhere to go down the field, has to find his check down, and it's not enough for the first down. Greg Reed last year back to receive the punt of Riley Stevenson, led the nation in punt returning last year at 18 and a half per return. Stevenson has had two punts, both of them over 50 yards today. Picks that one up away from Reed, who has to get it right on the sideline. BYU just had its longest drive of the day. It was 20 yards. They still have not scored down 6-0. College Football Live, weekdays at 4 on ESPNU. You look like an angel. Walk like an angel. Talk like an angel. But I got one. You're the devil in the sky. We put it through over 5,000 quality tests, so it'll stand up to just about anything. The Nissan Altima. Innovation that lasts. Innovation for all. Tired of. When shopping for a pre owned vehicle, why gamble and possibly pick a lemon? At Tallahassee Ford Lincoln Mercury, we offer you triple protection peace of mind. First, every certified pre owned vehicle we sell comes with a comprehensive warranty. Second, each comes with a free Carfax report that documents your vehicle's history. And third, if you're not completely satisfied with your purchase, just bring it back. Certified pre owns with risk free triple protection from only $89.95. Only from Tallahassee Ford Lincoln Mercury. You guys think I'm Mongolian too? Looking for a fresh, healthy alternative? Take a trip to Genghis Grill. Load up on your favorite meat and seafood. Spice it up like you would on the grill. Add your favorite veggies and sauce. Then let our Genghis Grill masters cook your selection to perfection. Genghis Grill, masters of Mongolian stir fry. <laughs> You're watching ESPN, new home of the Bowl Championship Series. Join host Lo Galindo with David Pollock and Charles Arbuckle for BCS Countdown for in-depth analysis of this week's games and a look ahead to next week's action. BCS Countdown presented by Allstate Monday at 6 Eastern on ESPNU and ESPNU HD. For more information, you can log on to ESPNU.com. Seminole Nation hasn't had a whole lot to cheer about. Just a couple of field goals to show for their domination on the offensive side of the ball. Pam Moore joined by Danny Cannell, the former Florida State great quarterback and had a hand literally in the <laughs> national championship holding on that game-winning kick. Hey, you can't do it without a good hold, right? Um, absolutely. <laughs> the Seminoles with the 6-0 lead. Christian Ponder, the terrific senior captain at quarterback, gives it up to Chris Thompson, and Thompson finds himself a whole lot of running room. Thompson down the sideline, and nobody's going to catch him. 83-yard touchdown. Just a great job of blocking up front. Lonnie Pryor out front. Watch the chop block right there. 
Outstanding job getting him down. And when you've got speed in the backfield, all he needs is a little crack to take it to the house. This is desperate. This is what Florida State needed. They needed to put seven points on the board just for a confidence booster, if anything. Terrific block by the fullback, Lonnie Pryor, who got just enough of Jordan Pendleton. Thompson did the rest. So finally, a touchdown for Florida State, a huge 83-yard touchdown run for Thompson. A big play for Florida State, opens the game up a little bit now, 13-0 Seminoles. You look like an angel. Walk like an angel, talk like an angel, but I got one. You're the devil in the sky. We put it through over 5,000 quality tests, so it'll stand up to just about anything. The Nissan Altima. Innovation that lasts. Innovation for all. Down by seven. Final play for the only thing that would make this any better is overtime. They'll need a miracle to win this football game. Aaron slot right drops back. Hines takes the pass at the 30. With the seam! Wow! Can you believe it? One man to beat! <laughs> We're headed to overtime! Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. Field goal for the win! ESPNU is home for the passionate college football fan as our experts break down the top 25 in a weekly three-hour special. Alabama looked fantastic this week. Where are they now and where are they going to be? That's the key. Go inside the game as our football gurus explain the ins and outs. Don't try to be extraordinary. You go back to the one thing that you do well. They're going to have to diagnose the run. They're going to have to go against a big offensive line. Four of the starters could easily end up as first-team All-Americans. The Experts, Tuesday at 1 on ESPNU. Celebrating its six years sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $2.1 million in scholarship money. And we've had a couple of field goals and one extra point right now for Florida State. And this young man, number 23, Chris Thompson, got a handoff and busted it out for an 83-yard touchdown. I'd say it's safe to say he has the hot hand, or the hot <laughs> yes. feet, I guess you should say. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of speed in that backfield. Pound for pound, the strongest and most dependable player, according to his head coach, or most dependable running back, I should say, according to Jimbo Fisher. Very interesting. He talked about having depth at that position, how important it is, no matter where you play, what level, to have that depth in case somebody goes down or to give a guy a break. And we have seen him use three different tailbacks today. Hopkins about to kick it off. BYU down 13 nothing, And that one goes out of bounds. Not a good kickoff for the usually dependable Hopkins. Let's Free get an update from Dari Noka. Kicking team. Ball. All right, Pam, let's update a couple of games. Nebraska, eighth ranked in all the land in Seattle to take on Washington. Taylor Martinez, five of eight, passing 125 yards. But here's a handoff to Roy Hallou Jr., Nebraska leading 21 13. An early interception for Jake Locker. Same with Matt Sims, Tennessee inside the 10, but he's picked off by Jonathan Boston, Florida up 7 3. Thank you very much, Dari. Back here it is Florida State on top of BYU, 13 to nothing. Florida State trying to win in this series for the second straight season. Jake Heaps for the third straight series at quarterback for the Cougars. Hands it off to DeLuigi, and he finds some daylight. Going down into Florida State territory, picked up 21 big yards. And I'm glad they're sticking with Heaps here, giving him a chance. But J.J. DeLuigi, he's a back that can make some big plays out. 103 yards rushing last week against the Air Force Academy. But they have got to get their running game going to take some of the pressure off the quarterback. That was his first career 100-yard game last week. 21 yards on that run already, the longest drive of the game for BYU. One play, 21 yards. Korea and Mendenhall now in the backfield. Korea gets it. Goes up the middle and is stopped after about a two-yard gain. Ryan Korea on the carry for BYU. 
So BYU's drives, as you might surmise from being shut out, not exactly things of beauty. No, and I think BYU is really still searching for an identity on the offensive side of the football. And it all starts with the quarterback position. If you can't make up your mind which guy is going to be the man, uh, it, they're going to face that until they decide. And the field position has been decidedly in favor of Florida State. Starting on the 40 this time for BYU, their own 40, by far their best starting field position. Second and seven right now on the 36 of the Seminoles. Di Luigi gets away from one would-be tackler and then is bounced out of bounds. That's going to be called a late hit. Here comes the flag at the 30. Marcus Joyner, see him being talked to right now with the late hit. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit defense, number 20. 15 yards penalty, first down. And Pam, we talked about it earlier, LaMarcus Joyner, a true freshman. Mark Stoops called a lot of his defensive players immature. That was just an immature penalty right there. You've got to learn when to hit a guy, when to lay off. Putting your team really against the eight ball here, backing yourselves up, and giving BYU a chance to keep their drive going. First down at the 15. That was Florida State's fourth penalty now. 40 yards total in penalties. Flag. Some movement on the interior line. Dead ball. False start. Offense, number 20. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Joshua Casada called for the false start. And Jacoby McDaniel wisely saw a little movement in the backfield. Took off, the offense moves back five. Up the middle, here's Korea. Gets that yardage back. Up eight yards. You mentioned Mark Stoops, the first year defensive coordinator. Been the defensive coordinator the last six years for his brother over at Arizona. And when we met with him yesterday, he just talked about, he really thinks that this defense can be pretty good and much improved over what it was last year. Well, let's face it, it was bad. It's been pretty brutal around yeah. here for a while in Tallahassee, and Mark Stoops comes in, and I think it's going to take some time for the players to get used to his system, and when they do, I think they'll be successful. Here's a second down. De Luigi gets a couple of yards. De Luigi coming off a career high 103 yards last week in the loss to Air Force, not finding a lot of running room today. No, Florida State's defense is doing a pretty good job corralling the football, getting after the quarterback, containing the running game. J.J. DeLuigi does find some running room there, and that's probably the reason they're down here close to the end zone. 21 of his 44 yards today coming on that run that we just showed you. BYU one for five on third down. Here's a third and six. Finally in scoring territory, and that's off the hands of Korea. Heaps could not connect and there you see a young running back you see a young quarterback there as a screen on the, when you're running a screen you've got to let it develop show a little patience he does a good job looking it off but let your back get out there let the offensive lineman get out in front of him and just sometimes you've got to use a little touch on the football those backs aren't used to catching the football a lot give him a little soft throw that he can catch and take to the end zone boy and you saw in the replay how much room Korea still had still some breathing room Mitch Payne in to attempt a 28-yard field goal. And BYU finally gets on the board. Good field position. Remember, they started at their own 40, and they were able to drive down and now being called a 29-yard field goal for the senior from Ogden, who's been starting since he was a freshman. ESPNU's coverage of college football continues tonight at 7 Eastern as number 15 LSU welcomes in Mississippi State. And then follow that at 10.30 Eastern, UNLV, head coach Bobby Hawks, first year coming over from Montana, takes on Idaho. College football primetime presented by Five Hour Energy on ESPNU and ESPNU HD. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. And BYU there going with Jake Heaps for, uh, uh, Heaps for, I believe, the third drive. And you just see the confidence factor, not only in his throws, but in the offense surrounding there. There's continuity. You're hearing the calls come from one guy. It's one voice. And I really feel like BYU has got to establish that. I know they want to protect the true freshman at quarterback and not throw him to the wolves, so to say. But I almost feel like it's better to 
let them have a little baptism by fire. Let them get hit. Let them make some mistakes, and then teach them in the film room. And he's going to be your long-term answer at quarterback. But uh, give him a chance to go out there and run the offense. Replacing Max Hall, who is the number one career leader in Mountain West Conference history in total yards, passing yards, passing touchdowns, and all sorts of BYU records, which is college football fans know is astonishing because they have had some terrific quarterbacks at BYU. Greg Reed back to get the kick at his five. Very dangerous returner, but he is bottled up at the 20-yard line. Four minutes and 20 seconds left to go. Both teams with their full complements of timeouts in the first half. BYU is so strong, you know, just their coaching. They're so well disciplined out there, and you see it on the kickoff coverage. They've got a guy in Greg Reed who is special out there, and they are not going to let him go anywhere. Reed so dangerous, one of the most dangerous returners in all of college football. See what Florida State can do with four minutes and 20 seconds left. Ponder throwing back, completes it to Taiwan Easterling. He picks up about seven. And talking about the well-coached players at BYU, watch the running lanes all the way down the field, evenly spaced out. A lot of times guys get bunched up on, ki on kickoff coverage and they get out of their lanes, but these guys stay to their assignments, and you can see the great job they do corralling. Greg Reed is part one of the most explosive kick returners in college football. Led the nation in punt returning last year, also averaged about 26 yards of kick returns. But they had him in their sights. A good move by Burt Reed. Got a nice block on the edge. Picked up only a couple of yards, though. And Brian Logan credit him with the tackle. Well, those big blocks outside are nice, and they get their oohs and ahs from the crowd. You see number 84, Rodney Smith, getting a nice blow, but great job following up. BYU pursuing the football. It's a great form tackle by Brian Logan. He's probably one of the smallest guys in the field right now, but... He plays big. Brian Logan only 5'6", one foot shorter than Rodney Smith, the receiver. Ponder trying to do it with his legs, and he won't get there. Take it down just past the line of scrimmage. Christian Ponder on the keeper. On the stop number one, Jordan Pendleton. So it's about fourth and, let's say, about a yard and a half. Florida State's going to punt the ball away. And we've seen that three times now. Christian Ponder running a sort of wildcat type running game, getting the running back in front of him. But there, BYU does a good job stringing it out and holding Florida State and making him punt the football. Third time they've gone three and out in the afternoon. Sean Powell back in to punt. Ten BYU defenders on the line. Some of them peel back, and they almost got to it. Powell goes down, but we don't see a penalty flag. Punt fielded by Chambers who was taken down at the 30. Big time punt rush, Powell went down. Here's a look at BYU coming in on the punter. Well, that's a good acting job right there because it really did not look like he had much contact, but he's got to give it his best effort. <laughs> Terrific job by Powell, the junior from Rome, Georgia, to try to get a call, did not do it. So now two minutes and 10 seconds left to go. BYU with all three of its timeouts, starting out from the 29-yard line. Powell also had a 49-yard punt on that last play. Heaps, four series in a row now. He has been at quarterback. DeLuigi pops it out to the outside, picks up the first down, and a whole lot more starting to get some running room in the last couple of drives. Joyner knocks him out of bounds, but it's 20 more yards for DeLuigi. DeLuigi starting to find his rhythm, as well as the BYU offensive line giving him some opportunities. And Florida State's got to be careful because one thing that the coaches definitely stressed was that BYU will never give up. Heaps completes it over the middle to DeLuigi. And the running back with a couple of big plays back to back. Bradham makes the stop. But they're down to the 39 yard line of Florida State. And a first down. 
BYU really picking up the pace, getting to the football. Jay keeps getting comfortable in the no huddle. The no huddle really bothering Florida State last week at Oklahoma. Korea with the carry, he picks up four. And there's different types of speeds that you run a no huddle with. Earlier in the game, it was a little bit slower, and Jay keeps now applying the pressure to Florida State's defense, getting his guys lined up much quicker, getting the snap off, keeping this defense on their heels. They still have three timeouts remaining as we go under a minute 20 to go in the first half. Heap stays in the pocket, delivers it, and it is not brought in. Cody Hoffman defended by Greg Reed. This was a great job by the backs. Watch number 33, Brian Correa, come over, pick up the linebacker, give Jay Keeps time to look down the field. And that's a play that Cody Hoffman's got to make for his quarterback. It was, pretty, it was well defended, but if it hits you in the hands, you should come down with that one. Boy, Reed went in there and got his hand in there to knock it away. Third and six. Heaps. Throws it low. It's completed. Past the first down marker. Luke Ashworth, defended by Joyner, came up with the big third down grab. And Pam, it really looks to me like this team, this BYU offense, is finding their identity right now. Jake Heaps looks very comfortable back there. And I know we don't see all the things at practice, what goes on in training camp, but Jake Heaps looks very comfortable running this offense. True freshman from the state of Washington. A play action goes to his check down man. It's completed to Mike Haig, sophomore from Salt Lake City, picks up 13 and another first down. And that's an outstanding job. Jay Keeps, this is a very mature move for a quarterback. Senses the clock go off in his head that he has to find his check, check down and gets rid of it on time. And a lot of times when you look down the field, you come back to your check down. He'll pick up a lot of yards for you, as you saw there. That's the sixth receiver to catch a ball today for Brigham Young. First down at the 15. Several Florida State players jump off sides. We'll see if they were induced. Dead ball, offside. Defense, number 97, contact in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty, still first down. Demonte McAllister called for the contact. Coming up in the ESPNU halftime report with Dari Noka and Chris Doring. Virginia Tech struggling at home again. Mark Ingram with a terrific return, and Michigan was down to, a, to UMass, a team in the championship series, former 1AA. And Denard Robinson once again with a big day. Michigan looks like they're back on track. First and five after the penalty into the end zone and batted away by LaMarcus Joyner. The coaches think that he is going to be a very special and good cornerback. Knocked it away from Ashworth. Well, he was a highly touted high school recruit of St. Thomas down in Fort Lauderdale, and he has some special skills out there. True freshman making a great play on the football. A lot of times you don't see that from young players. Gets his head around, finds it, and bats it down. In fact, he was USA Today's National High School Defensive Player of the Year last year, playing now as a true freshman. Second and five from the 10. D. Luigi is stopped. BYU needs to take one of its three timeouts right now. So he picked up a first down, which will stop the clock momentarily. So a first and goal coming up for BYU. And the Cougars do take a timeout. This is huge here for BYU. If they can go in with a score at halftime, and keep the score 13 to 10. You talk about a momentum shift because it was all Florida State in the first quarter and most of the second quarter, but BYU looks like they found a little bit of rhythm with Jay Keeps at the quarterback position. They've already gone 67 yards on this drive. Their previous long drive was a 49-yarder that resulted in the field goal the last time they had the football, so they really have gotten it together. Fourth straight possessions now. They have gone with the true freshman, and they are starting to click. I mean, I'm a firm believer. I believe that's why they're having successes, because they're sticking with one guy, giving him a chance to go out there and just play football. And offensive coordinator Robert and I, he talked about 
how impressive this young true freshman. He called him the best true freshman he has ever seen as far as being prepared and ready to play the game at such an early stage in his career. Now with the first and goal at the four. Heaps has completed three of his five passes on this drive, gives it back to De Luigi, who tries to get around the corner and goes down. Maybe got a yard. Greg Reed coming up from his corner spot to make the stop. And another timeout. BYU running with a full house in the backfield, had a load of running backs. Boy, Reed coming in and throwing his body at De Luigi. And Reed's playing with a lot of pride right now. He did take some heat for his tackling or his poor tackling last week and looks much better prepared today. Credited with 10 tackles, but still missed some. And I think the, was it the Florida State coaching staff said there were at least 15 missed tackles that they counted as a team on tape. Across the board. It was kind of interesting talking to both coaches this week. A lot of similar talk coming from both sides. Both teams talked about poor fundamentals, poor tackling, you know, immaturity, young teams. A lot of similar circumstances for both of these teams. And both of them so far played pretty well, especially BYU picking it up here in the second quarter, making it a very competitive game. Florida State had to settle for a couple of field goals to go up 6-0. There is the offensive coordinator, Robert and I. Now in his sixth year, and on the other side, Mark Stoops from the famous Stoops coaching family said it just felt like it was the right time to leave Arizona and take this job at Florida State. He has had several offers before. Second goal, another full house backfield for BYU. De Luigi gets it and taken down immediately. A great defensive stand by Florida State as BYU keeps going on the ground. And Florida State just doing a great job at the point of attack. Linebackers coming up to fill the hole. Even the safety, Nick Moody, getting involved. Making a great open field tackle. There's a ground level look. E. Luigi has nowhere to go. And that's a situation where they've got a timeout in their back pocket. A lot of teams might be thinking you're going to do play action because you don't want the clock to keep moving. But they had it in their back pocket. They could take another stab on the ground. And now they're in a situation where they probably do have to throw it. Although with 18 seconds, they could, they could attempt a running play and sprint on the field goal team. But we'll have to see what Robert Ine has dialed up. Third and goal here. No timeouts remaining. Nick Moody starting today at Free State. He made that terrific stop on the last play. Now Florida State's called the timeout. Mark Stoops wants to make sure his guys are all on the same page and a huge sequence coming up. This is big for both teams. It's a big momentum play right here. Florida State can come up with a stop. They'll have the momentum going in at halftime and vice versa for BYU if they can score. What a huge confidence booster for them to take it into the locker room. teams coming into this game at one and one. BYU beat Washington in week one, then lost at Air Force last week. Samford was the team Florida State beat in week one. A lot of people were excited about that 59 to six score around here, but then they went to Oklahoma. Yeah, well, it was a catch-22 situation because you wanted to have a strong performance, but then the expectations were set so high, people thought the Florida State team was gonna go in and get a victory in Norman, which is not an easy task, to put it mildly. Third and goal. Four wide receivers in now for BYU. The true freshman at quarterback. Jacobson in motion. Heaps into the end zone, has his man, touchdown! Cody Hoffman with the score. And what a big time throw by Jake Keeps. I really think you're seeing a quarterback come of age right here. Surveying the field, does a great job staying patient. Finding his receiver in the back of the end zone. Watch his eyes, looks to the left, comes back underneath, and delivers a bullet. You can see his strong arm right there to Cody Hoffman, number two. 
And you talk about identity. I really believe this BYU offense is finding their quarterback, finding their leader in their true freshman quarterback, Jake Heaps. And you have just seen Jake Heaps' first collegiate touchdown pass. There will be more. And that was one thing Bronco Mendenhall did stress to us, that he said Jake Heaps will be a successful quarterback for BYU in the long term. He just didn't know when it would happen. And I think they're all pleasantly surprised that it's happening right now in Tallahassee. On a huge stage here in Tallahassee, Matt Reynolds, the very talented left tackle, is being helped off the field. BYU's left tackle being helped off. Boy, he was a gamer last week in this game against Air Force. Had to take IVs for a couple of days before the game. Four bags of IV right before the game and still played against Air Force. Mitch Payne in to add the extra point. And BYU, which really struggled in its first five drives, has come up with ten points in its last two. Here's Heaps from field level. And this is one thing that separates an average quarterback from a great quarterback, is being able to make tight throws down in the red zone when there's not much field to work with. And there he delivered a perfect strike. A very nifty 71-yard drive took up less than two minutes. They used up all three of their timeouts. And it culminates with Hoffman's first career touchdown catch. And Heap's first career touchdown throw for BYU. Well, Bronco Mendenhall said they did want to protect him of sorts. He is a young quarterback. They don't want to get him flustered or have him have a poor performance and shake his confidence. But this is a huge confidence builder for this young guy. And everyone we talked to at BYU said that he was confident and, and came in, as you mentioned earlier, Danny, very well prepared coming in as a true freshman and has handled the two quarterback situation very graciously. And he's really been a blessed young athlete. Almost one of these guys who's been born and bred to be a quarterback. Spent a lot of time at some of the, the prestigious camps around the country in high school and really was noticed by a lot of colleges across the country. Decided to play his college ball at BYU. Short kickoff taken at the 30 and then spun down around the 31-yard line is Lonnie Pryor running back. So 10 seconds left to go. Here's Christian Ponder going to get the ball around the 31-yard line. Ponder in the first half, 7 of 12 for 68 yards. His team only up by three, and this crowd has gotten really quiet. Yep, they haven't had much to cheer for recently, and BYU with the hot hand currently grabbing the momentum. Ponder looks like he's going to take a knee, and indeed he does to end the first half. Some boos cascading down from the crowd here at Florida State. BYU with a couple of impressive drives at the end of the half. Touchdown throw from Heaps to Hoffman. Makes the score 13 to 10 Florida State at the half. Time for our ESPNU halftime report with Dari, no Dari Noka. Sorry, Dari. Yeah, Pam, no worries. Dari, Dari, it's all the same. How about TCU and Baylor? Dalton hands it off and it lets Ed Wesley, 49 yards. Horn Frogs out quickly on Baylor. It's 14-3. And TCU thinking maybe jump Boise State and some of those polls, especially seeing what Virginia Tech's been doing. We'll show you that in just a moment. In the meantime, we welcome you in. Chris Doring alongside me. I'm Dari Noka, former All-SEC, All-America wide receiver at Florida. All right, we're watching Florida State against BYU. Yeah. Late touchdown for BYU. Perhaps big, but what have you seen? What have you taken away, at least from Florida State's perspective? Well, Florida State's done nothing offensively. You look at one of six on third down. They have no rhythm. If it wasn't for the long 83-yard run there, they would have done nothing in the first half. So I expected Christian Ponder and that offense to bounce back from what they did last week at, at uh, Norman. They have got to find a way to move the football. All right, there you go. Let's get rolling through some highlights, shall we? How about those Hokies of Virginia Tech trying to avoid an 0-3 start? against East Carolina. Pretty good team out of Conference USA. And here you go. Ryan Williams takes a helmet to the knee. Did not come back in the game. We'll give you more on him as we have more on him. So it was all Darren Evans pretty much then for the Hokies. 
Evans, seven yards, touchdown. Hokies up by four. Yeah, Hokies got up here early but uh, struggled for much of the first half. Uh, looked like they still suffering a little bit of the hangover from JMU. Now, uh, East Carolina, first year as a starter for Dominique Davis, and he can throw, but he can run, too. Dominique Davis, 21 yards, down to the one, set up a one-yard touchdown run. So, ECU had a three-point lead at the break in Blacksburg. Fourth quarter, down eight, Davis. Picked off by Rashad Carmichael, who goes 68 quickly as Virginia Tech finally gets that first win of the year, 49 to 27. Alabama, Duke. Yep, welcome back, Heisman <laughs> Trophy winner. Mark Ingram's first action. This is his first carry. His first carry, he goes 48 yards. This guy got scoped two weeks ago. Yeah. Good today <laughs> in the uh, first quarter especially. It, it, nice luxury to be able to have him and Trent Richardson as a one-two punch for Alabama. Oh, my goodness. And there's no question it would appear who the one and who the two of that punch is. Here's Greg McElroy. Touchdown to Julio Jones, 14-0. You forget about Julio Jones being on the team with all the running game that Alabama's been able to put together. Big-time weapon on the outside for them. 75 receiving yards for Jones. And here goes Ingram for 50. You know, last year in a Heisman Trophy season. He had two runs of more than 45 yards. He had two of those in the first quarter. Ingram again. 17 more. How about seven carries, 148 yards, two touchdowns. And then Trent Richardson, just six carries and 16 yards. But here's a kickoff. He's like, I'm still around. Yeah, don't forget about me here. I'm still around. He fumbles the kickoff, but then goes untouched virtually for the uh, touchdown there. Great players in that backfield for Alabama. If there was a question about Ingram's health, I think it's solved. If there was a question about what they'd lose because of Ingram, that's clearly solved. Where is a weakness with Alabama now? I have no idea where that weakness is. You look at the way they've played defensively so far. I know you're playing Duke. Let's don't get excited about yeah. that. But uh, they are extremely deep on both sides of the ball. Uh, A.J. McCarron's going to come in here in the second half and probably light it up as much as Greg McElroy did. I really like this Alabama team. They are loaded from top to bottom. Wow, they look awfully, awfully good. All right, we're rolling along on the Sports Center U Halftime Report. We hit the ACC. Of course, you're watching Florida State. How about Georgia Tech and North Carolina? Tech coming off a bad loss at Kansas. Carolina, well, that's playing their second game. Highlights ahead. ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Clemson Auburn at 7 Eastern and Iowa versus Arizona at 1030. Tonight on ESPN, college football lives here. If you're Come on, Zeus. Let's go. We are all so fortunate to live in an area that is so beautiful. I love the weather like this and the fresh smell of the outdoors. The air that you breathe is very important. Do members of your family Shoot. suffer from allergies? Do you have hot or cold spots in your house? Are your utility bills out of control? We solve these problems with a healthy home checkup from Benson's Heating and Air. We have been improving the air that you breathe for 30 years. Call Benson's today. It's the right thing to do. At the Hourglass, we know it's important to get the most for your money. And we have four big ways you can save. No appointments necessary. Just stop into one of our locations at your convenience. You'll save on eye exams because we accept most vision and medical insurance plans. When you buy a pair of glasses, you get a second pair free. You can even give them to a family member or a friend. Take your new glasses home with you. Most lenses will be ready in about an hour. We'll be glad to mail replacement contacts to you as well. One stop, one trip. There are a lot of ways to save at the Hourglass. Chris Doring, Dari Noka with you. Here we go. Georgia Tech and North Carolina. Sean Drone back to play for Carolina this week. Missed the first game against LSU. Orwin Smith, 73 yards for Georgia Tech. Impossible to defend that triple option when Georgia Tech's running it well. They, uh, North Carolina uh, did a good job later in the game defending it, being assignment smart, and really liked the way that, uh, obviously, here T.J. Yates on the big throw down the sideline to get North Carolina on the scoreboard. Yeah, Eric Highsmith heels up 10-7. You saw the run by Orwin Smith. That was his only carry of the game, 73 yards. Here we get, what? A pass? Huh? Whoa, whoa, slow down, Joshua. Joshua Nesbitt complete to Roddy Jones. 
But when they do it, they do it well, right? They, they did it four times, completed three of them. They certainly <laughs> missed Demarius Thomas there for that Georgia Tech passing game. Well, that set up a one-yard Josh Nesbitt touchdown run. After two field goals for Tech, they're up by six. T.J. Yates to Johnny uh, White. They needed ten. They got five. That's not going to work. Not in American football, it won't. 30-24, to 24, Georgia Tech wins. UNC 0-2. Maryland and West Virginia. Bill Stewart and company off that 15-point come from behind win over Marshall. Marshall, Marshall. Geno Smith to Jock Sanders. Look at the move by Jock. How about West Virginia coming out of the gates, still hot from that comeback against Marshall a week ago. Got on the board early, but kind of shut it down there in the second half. Yeah, Tavon Austin ended up capping that drive with a touchdown. And then Geno Smith to Stedman Bailey in the back of the end zone. Great grab. I like that catch. You know I love it when a wide receiver makes a great catch. They reviewed this, and the play did stand. Good call by the replay official. Right, right foot down. And then Geno Smith to Stedman Bailey for a touchdown. Have we heard that? Heard that once or twice today. Yeah, there you go. Geno Smith was dino Mike for the Mountaineers. How good was he? Well, he threw four touchdown passes, threw for 268 yards. How about Florida and Tennessee? This season in the first quarter, nothing, nothing, and nothing. 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 All right, Florida, Tennessee. You get it? Right, they've done nothing. <laughs> Thanks for rubbing it in. You got, oh, yeah. Sorry, Gator. Oh, boy. That, seen that, too, haven't we? That again. Mike Pouncey, John Brantley, bad snap. Yeah. First quarter, Tennessee driving scoreless. Matt Sims, the fake. And then he finds Luke Stocker for the first down. Led to a field goal. Volunteers up 3 nothing. What? Mike Gillisley, touchdown for Florida. Gillisley is running it in there after a big catch by Amarius Hines on third down. He's the guy replacing Chris Rainey in the slot this week. Inside the five, Sims picked. Jonathan Bostic there. Florida up 7-3. Boy, in a real shootout here at the half. Yeah. I'll tell you, man, just up and down. Yeah. Not really. No, yeah. it hasn't been that at all. All right, well, tell me about Florida. Yeah, Florida, obviously, right now, very conservative with what they want to do offensively. They have run the ball with very little success, which surprised me. I think they're going to have to open it up a little bit in the second half. But what I look for is this kind of shallow uh, roster that Tennessee has beginning to wear down. We'll see if Florida continues to try to pound the football and if they can break through. They've got to develop a big play once in a while. I haven't really taken any shots down the field. You say Florida's conservative. Is that by need or uh, by choice? Choice. Well, that's by choice. I think you look at what uh, what Urban Meyer likes to do. He likes to play great defense. He likes to play great special teams. But what he wants to do is protect some of these young guys. John Brantley only in his third start, first time on the road in a hostile environment. They don't want to put him in a situation where he's going to go out there and fail and ruin his psyche for the rest of the season. All right. Well, Florida, the thought with what when you watch Florida is maybe the SEC East is up for grabs. South Carolina looks good. A lot of people like Georgia maybe coming in, but certainly not if they start 0-2 in conference play for the first time since 19. 1993, no A.J. Green, third of four games that he will miss. Ryan Mallett, oh, your play action. You love the play I action. I love the play action. It's so effective because of the downhill running game that Arkansas has. Ryan Mallett, the best play action quarterback in the SEC. Chris Gregg, 57 yards, and then Mallett. To Reggie Wingo Jr., 22 yards. I love the way Mallett uses all of his offensive weapons, too. Spreads the ball all over the field. Great job of running Bobby Petrino's offense. No truth to the rumor Georgia has eight guys on defense. It's just looked at looked that two plays. Well, Aaron Murray. Well, Georgia, rather the handoff there for the touchdown. Washon Elliott ties it up. Closing seconds of the game. Oh, no. If you're Georgia, you give that up to Greg Childs. Touchdown. Wow, Arkansas with a great road win, 31-24. More SEC tonight on ESPNU. Mississippi State visits LSU, and then we go out west. Let's go inside for football to Moscow, Idaho. The Vandals take on UNLV. Uh, how about Chris John Thompson? How many runs has he had? One. How many yards was it? 83. That's what you said. That's the only offense we've seen from Florida State. They're up three at the break. We're back in a moment.
Down by seven. Final play for the only thing that would make this any better is overtime. They'll need a miracle to win this football game. Aaron slot right, drops back. Hines takes the pass at the 30. With the seam! Wow! Can you believe it? One man to beat! <laughs> We're headed to overtime! Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. Field goal for the win! For 150 years, the values of Florida State University remain unwavering. Strength, the capacity for endurance. Skill, using one's knowledge creatively. Character, moral excellence and social responsibility. Together, these values shape leaders who advance our state, our nation, and our world. Strength, skill, character. Florida State University. Chris Doring, Darinoka, Oklahoma off a 30-point win over Florida State, taking on Air Force. I kind of dig that tune. I like the tune, but uh, Oklahoma a little, a little flat in this ballgame, Marley. Can you get your boys going? Uh, well, we're trying here. Kenny Stills, that's a true freshman there. DeMarco Murray, we know about him. Yeah, he's a big-time player. you got to have a big year for him for Oklahoma to have some success. 7-3 game, Landry Jones, Ryan Broyles. That's a gain of 15. It led to a field goal. They can't get away from the Air Force, though. You know what they say about Air Force? and Troy Calhoun, man, they hang in there, keep yeah. fighting. Yeah, they may pop somebody. They may pop somebody today. How about Washington hosting eighth-rate Nebraska? Todd McShay loves Jake Locker. Have we mentioned that? I like Taylor Martinez a lot better. <laughs> this guy has been efficient in the running and passing game for the Cornhuskers this afternoon. Look at Mike McNeil hit the pylon there. Well done. And then McK uh, Martinez to Brandon Kinney. Two first names, 55 yards for Brandon Kenny. Talked about Nebraska and Taylor Martinez in the running game, but it's been the arm that's been impressive for the Cornhuskers. Yeah, Taylor Martinez looks awfully good in every aspect. Meanwhile, Jake Locker, you know what he is passing in the first half? How about two for 10? Two for 10, but he does have a seven yard touchdown run. So Washington trying to hang around the Scurs, but the Scurs don't want to let him. Roy Hallou Jr., eight yard touchdown. Martinez is thrown for 125, run for 25 more as Nebraska up 28-14. How about Arizona State, Wisconsin? Arizona State has played two FCS teams, Portland State and Northern Arizona. Now they go to Madison. And now they get Omar Bolden goodbye. How about that scheduling? You got <laughs> no idea what you have rolling None. in Wisconsin. No clue. But you have a 97-yard touchdown run. Arizona State up 7-3. Their quarterback. Maybe you missed it in the NAU game. It's Stephen Three, former Michigan Wolverine. Ooh, oh! Terry Taylor getting tricky. Led to a field goal, so the Devils were up 10-3. You think Wisconsin was done? No. Scott Tolzien to Lance Kendricks. Wisconsin takes the lead. Ensuing kickoff, though. Watch the clock. Middlebrooks. Gonna Here goes Kyle Middlebrooks, and he's gone. If Shelton Johnson can catch him, he's not gone. He caught him, and he was down at the one, and time was out. That's a great play that doesn't show up in the stat sheet right there. That's a great point. Great effort. Wow. Jake Heaps, BYU, touchdown pass just before the end of the first half. It's 13-10. No. Over the past 75 years, we've seen homeowners use all kinds of methods to sell and buy houses. Some absolutely ridiculous. The real estate market is ever-changing, even in Tallahassee. So call a realtor or one of our affiliates from the Tallahassee Board of Realtors today or visit us online at tbrnet.org. Tallahassee Board of Realtors, celebrating 75 years of service in our community. 
Eye Associates knows glasses aren't for everyone, and the cost and hassle of contacts can be just too much for some lifestyles. Now, a breakthrough in vision surgery, Eye LASIK. The new standard in all laser LASIK offers greater precision and safety compared with traditional techniques. Dr. Viet Bui is the only fellowship-trained physician in the metro area certified to provide blade-free LASIK. Your largest, most comprehensive provider of eye care for 50 years. Eye Associates of Tallahassee, all you need to see. Marinoka, USC, visiting Minnesota. Lane Kiffin's team a narrow win over Virginia last week. Adam Weber, Marquise Gray. Oh, go and go, golfers up 7 0. What? Yeah, it led to a touchdown. And then Mark Tyler. Uh, touchdown, we're all tied up. USC, man. I, I, you don't know what to expect from these guys. They play well at spurts, and sometimes they come back and disappoint you. Well, they, they haven't been great offensively, but here's Matt Barkley to Ronald Johnson, 53 yards. So it's 13-7. Remember, Minnesota last week lost to South Dakota. That might leave a mark. How about Massachusetts and Michigan? FCS team at the big house, up 17-7. Have we heard of this type of theme before? Denard Robinson then. To Daryl Stoneham and Stoneham goes for 66. That was the turning point in the ball game. All the momentum for UMass until that point in time before Stoneham goes the distance. And then Robinson to Daryl Stoneham for 10. You know Robinson running away, the front runner in the Heisman race. I know it's early, but accurate to say? No, Denard Robinson, uh, he was awesome today, both on the ground. More impressed today with the way he threw the football, though. Yeah, we haven't gotten to see him throw it a ton, but he was very good. And then UMass comes back. Kyle Havens to Julian Talley, six yards. Thought they were done for a while. Though. Right. Uh, UMass rally. Well, you know, Minutemen, they're ready at a moment's <laughs> notice. Kyle Havens to Andrew Crevice for the touchdown. They're down five. They go the onside kick. Oh, it goes out of bounds. Heartbreak. You don't want to be on the hands team. I always hated being on the hands team. Man. You were a hands guy? I was a hands guy. I hated being on the hands team. <laughs> A lot of respect for you hands guys. You're going to get your clock clean. <laughs> no question. <laughs> Other Big Ten scores. Terrell Pryor, no problem. Look what he did. He did throw a couple of picks, though, against Ohio. And then Penn State, that was easy. Ho-hum, wake up, game's over, 24-0 over Kent State. All right, so BYU down three to Florida State. Let's go from the Cougars perspective yeah. here. What do we need to see in the second half? Well, I think what we saw from them first off was a great drive to finish off the first half. I thought Jake Heaps did a good job of managing the offense. J.J. Deluigi, 72 yards on 12 rushes. So I'm very impressed with the way that they've moved the ball against Florida State's defense. Florida State has got to find a way to put together something on offense to get some consistency going. Yeah, Florida State defensively giving up just 152 yards. And well, they're playing well against BYU, but the Cougars are not out of it, not by a long shot. Back to the second half from Tallahassee in moments. If you're looking at a home security system, or even if you already have one, ADT can give you so much more. Like our new keychain remote. Now you can easily arm and disarm your system with the touch of a button, even turn on your lights. You can also count on fast alarm response from our advanced network of monitoring centers, plus great local service, ADT's exclusive theft protection guarantee, and a money-back guarantee if you're not completely satisfied. And you can get all this and more for as little as a dollar a day. A single ADT system can help protect your home from burglary, fire, and carbon monoxide. When an alarm is received, ADT can respond quickly, calling the local authorities for help. You can even add new technology like SafeWatch Video View. Now you can know what's happening in your home by actually seeing it on your cell phone, computer, or TV. Even if you already have a security system, it's easy to add ADT monitoring. Call now and save over $250 when you buy ADT's family package. It's peace of mind that can also save your life. ADT. Always there. 877-777-7777. 